Hey, what's up everybody? Frank Valkyria, welcome to the channel. Today we're doing a Matrix Resurrection review. So, spoilers ahead. If you haven't watched the movie, go watch the movie and then you can come back. Full of spoilers. Spoilers throughout. I'm gonna start to share my feelings about the, this movie after watching it. The first thing that came to me, the first thing that came out of me is a sense of hurt. I didn't believe that I could get hurt by a movie. I'm literally hurt by this movie. I feel absolutely betrayed, deep disappointment. The first movie was just a masterpiece. When I first watched it on VHS tape, because at the time I was much more in 99, I was much more into hard house cinema, like Francois Truffaut, Bonuel, Andrei Tarkovsky, uh, and all of those directors. So I was kind of like tired of usual Hollywood blockbuster format. But then again, a friend of mine, without spoiling it, told me like, listen, you love science fiction movie. You got to give this movie a chance. Go watch it. I'm sure you will blow you away. And it was true. When I watched it, The Matrix became immediately my favorite science fiction movie. Boom, right away. I could see the references and inspiration from Ghost in the Shell, even in the code uh, scene, you know, which is also similar in the beginning of Ghost in the Shell. For those of you that don't know Ghost in the Shell, it's a very popular uh, Japanese uh, anime. And I remember also when I watched it, I was blown away by it. So The Matrix is inspired a lot from that movie. But still, uh, in his own uh, right, an original story. So this movie, uh, I was willing to see how they could bring back both Neo and The Matrix. So I was open minded, really. I was like, OK, let's run with this. And as we learn, uh, from uh, the, the event of the third Matrix have passed 60 years after Neo defeated Smith and he was dragged away on this floating barge and uh, Trinity basically seemed to be dead inside the ship we learned that both of them were carried back into the machine city restored literally uh, resurrected them by rebuilding their bodies with the technology available and they plug them in this we learn later on by the therapist which is also thomas anderson therapist in the movie but also the creator of the new matrix so we don't have an architect anymore but we have the therapist so the therapist fought hard against the suits the machines to bring back neo because in his uh, uh, in his matrix he believed that this anomaly which you know needed to exist was better to keep it under control this way as long as he kept it together with trinity uh, which we also learn later on so the big problem i with this movie it's not so much the slow start where we see a thomas anderson that it's like basically drugged by blue pills to keep him numb because he believes that uh, his memories which he turned into a game because we learned that here in this new matrix is a game developer and he created a very successful franchise called the matrix games so he's super successful and popular but he believes that those memories that he turned into the game uh, are real or could be real which they're driving him mad and he goes to the therapist and the therapist keeps him keeps him under control by giving him a, a, a ton of blue pills and he's losing his mind. So we see a, a Thomas Anderson that is older, tired, disappointed, uh, delusional, on the edge of insanity. And it takes quite a long time, you know. Uh, for the beginning, I thought it was interesting to explore this more psychological aspect of the new Matrix. But then it took quite long. Then we get introduced those, to those new free minds which they are hacking into the memory of the Matrix to look for Neo. Because, of course, 60 years have passed and there are still those who believe that Neo was inside the Matrix and they're looking for him. But because his appearance has been changed by the Matrix, he sees himself normally, but everybody else sees him as this mid-aged man. 
and they cannot recognize him. And my thoughts are, there is a new Matrix where some dude created a game that is called The Matrix and is super successful. If I was a free mind looking for Neo, probably that's the first spot where I would look at to the creator of the game itself. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, what I find also very interesting is uh, the Easter eggs that we get into the movie about um, probably conversation that took place in the real world in terms of Lana Wachowski talking to Warner Brothers about making the Matrix. We have this scene where um, the agent of uh, Thomas Anderson is talking to him about the Warner Brothers wanting to make a fourth game and they will do it with or without them uh, because they can break the contract there with them. So I found that interesting, of course, because it feels like truly lifted from a real conversation. And later on, we have another Easter egg where a think tank of collaborators of Thomas Anderson, which they have to work on the new game. They are literally talking about what made the Matrix game successful and bullet time and now to kind of leverage again on that kind of galore of bullet time to make the new Matrix or to start a new franchise. So it feels like I don't know how much Lana Wachowski wanted to make this movie or she also made it because she was talking to make it at, and if she didn't somebody else would have done it anyway. So there is a little bit of that conflict in it and somehow also transpires into the movie because we see a new person. We see a new person th which seems also is trying, she's trying to find herself through this new matrix, so to speak. But the real issue with this, this movie, it's not some of those ideas which could have been developed in a far more interesting way, uh, but it's the time it takes. You know, we get to see this like slagging, lagging, like boring Neo, Thomas Anderson for most of the movie, you know, where he's just dreaming about this Tiffany, namely uh, also known as Trinity, <laughs> which she has now a life into the Matrix with family and three kids. And they meet at the coffee shop and he's just drooling over her, but yet never have the courage to interact with her. Uh, so. And, and just we keep going through this for quite some time until those new free minds, they want to free Neo. They look into the memory of the Matrix and they finally manage to find him. And with the help of also machines, which this is another cool aspect of the movie, I have to say. We learned that now the impact that the old Neo had on the machine goes way beyond to the point where even some machines, those sentient beings have been changed and they took side with the humans. That I found that interesting, could have been developed a little bit more, that could have made probably a more interesting movie. But no, we got a long time, it takes a long time to find Neo and then finally they drag him out of this pod, which is kind of cool scene. They bring him back to Hyo, which is the new Zion and at the head of the new CD, we have Niobe, which is the general. She's old and she's not so pleased to see Neo. Not so much because she's busy, more busy growing strawberries than to save free, you know, to free minds. Uh, but I also understand the concern. She was busy with keeping the peace that uh, the, the event of the third matrix had on you know on, on the reality they lived in and she wanted just to keep it their way and she brings again up the point of collaborating with those sentient uh, beings uh, to create the future and I thought this is really interesting they could have made such a more interesting movie if they took the stake you know they rose the stake by taking everything away from Neo and Thomas Anderson for this much time and then they could have created a bigger war that could have resoluted, uh, you know, find the resolution into finally get to uh, collaborating together, you know, truly finding a way not to use human anymore as batteries, but perhaps humanity together with the sentient beings, restoring the atmosphere and creating a future where actually they can just live outside together and collaborating together. So that could have been much, could have been an epic movie, honestly, that way. 
But here we have a Neo that it's stripped most of his power all the time. It really takes a long time to see a glimpse of the former Neo when he's freed and then he comes back into the Matrix, which is uh, because his most important, uh, let's say, objective is to get Trinity out. But uh, they have to find out first if she actually wants to be uh, freed. So they have to go through this whole process of consulting to, you know, with you know, Sati, which now she's a sort of like kind of oracle of the time. Um, and uh, they have to find out if this will not destroy everything. So uh, we just get this at the very last where the therapist uh, kind of confronts Neo, telling him the truth and uh, leaves the decision to her, you know either to um, you know walk away with her family or become Trinity again and it's the very last moment that she decides you know to to be Trinity again that we get some action some kicking but Neo never fully recovers so to speak they even make fun of him that he's unable to fly this time which I think it's a little bit heartbreaking you develop a character so well and you strip him of all this power and I would have been fine with it if it was temporary. You know, like I said, it's a nice gimmick in movies just to raise the stakes. You take the power away from the character that he has to rebuild back to it. You have seen it in, you know, in the last Batman. Uh, you have seen it many, many times. But this time, just we get a glimpse just too late. You know, I, I, I was hurt by seeing Neo and Trinity this way. And then finally, Trinity gets into her power and basically she's the one saving Neo because Neo cannot fly and uh, we have this peculiar new mode where agents uh, are not anymore chasing all the time the, the free minds but they have like this kind of new mode which they can turn everybody into kind of like zombies and uh, they're attacking Trinity and Neo trying to stop them from escaping we got this last scene where they're on top of this this skyscraper and they take a, a leap of fate but Neo still doesn't manage to to be able to fly and he's saved by Trinity which in this time in this in this version of the Matrix she finally sort of finds her own power and uh, she manages to fly and take Neo with her so at the end we see the sort of the power couple Trinity and Neo back into the Matrix and they go confront the therapist which now tells them like um, that they have basically the power to you know they're welcome to change whatever they can because you know he realized that it's not so much of a of a bargain of a deal because now Trinity and Neo they they got again that much power back that they can change literally the Matrix from within so um they they go confront him and yeah we just get there this little glimpse just tiny glimpse of neo being a little bit like uh, sidelined you know by uh, by the power of trinity and i'm also fine with it i just wish they shown us a little bit more of that power coming in before into the movie because all those other characters almost became caricatures. Even the Merovingian, you know, was reduced to this kind of buffoon, homeless, you know, which was just ranting. Uh, I don't understand really what happened with Morpheus. This sort of like sentient uh, program created by Neo himself, apparently. Um, and all the other free minds, all those characters, somehow they fail to become interesting to me. I, I want to watch the movie again, but the, the, the character development, in my opinion, was poor. And I just failed to, to be attracted by those characters, you know? Um, was not about inclusivity and all of that. I wish, you know, I, I wish they were just more interesting. I really did. I wish, you know, I, I don't care if they were like trisexual, bisexual, gender neutral, whatever. I don't care. You know, you could have made a sideline story of Trinity being bisexual. Well, I don't care. Just make them interesting. That's all I have to say. Make them layered, interesting characters, you know, like you could have made a transgender captain. Great. Fine. 
make them interesting you know and to me those characters they were much much interesting unfortunately so there seems to be um, an option perhaps for a new movie and again i would have explored the idea of having even a bigger war you know the neo gets back into his power and there is the the sort of final confrontation where they just want to get everybody out you know and uh, after you know they managed to to perhaps create this new war going through this new war they realize that the way out is truly collaborating with each other and they can re can rebuild humanity and the planet together without the need of turning humans into batteries that would have been like such a probably more epic movie than this one yeah go figure uh, in a way it feels like sometimes nowadays we only get to see like the, the the legacy of great movies being destroyed you know this movie is not better than the one the previous one is not really adding much even though they were exploring some nice ideas it just at the end of the day kind of drags down uh the rest i wish we could kind of erase you know some of those things a, a little bit the same happened with the new trilogy of star wars and i fear it's going to happen again also with movies like you know in the, the last indiana jones they're producing and it's such a, a missed opportunities those people have hundreds of millions at disposal to to do the best job they can and i i wonder isn't there anybody like voicing their you know their dissent or whatever when they see this in the cut room and they go like ah, maybe it's not really great you know don't, don't they think of that it's like how do they how like the average person can see this and some some can explain in more depth some in less depth but with their feelings perhaps but the average viewer can see this and go like meh so how can a lot of trained people talented people look at this in the cutting room and not think like this is not great we got to make this great this is not great so i wonder what were the reasons which created this outcome was like an oversight of people is it really truly the the vision of the director i really wonder i'm actually interested more into those things than everything else because i don't think it would have taken much to make this movie great really i don't think it would have taken much so i wonder what happened that actually went this way i don't know guys let me know your thoughts i i i'm gonna give the movie another try and uh, yeah, talk to you later. Bye.